Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Katsuhiko Naito. Uh, I'd like to start this seminar with this title, uh, Photoluminescence of Erbium Doped Isotopically Controlled Silicon. <coughs> At first, I talk about uh, motivation of my research. Uh, recently, silicon photonics is uh, very attract. Uh, it attracts a lot of attention uh, due to its uh, potential to combine the electronics and photonics. Uh, in particular, uh, optical interconnection on, si on silicon chip uh, is very fascinating te uh, technology <coughs> because uh, to overcome the signal delay of electro electronic ele electrical connection <coughs> and to reduce and the power consumption. Uh, to realize uh, this te technology, uh, these, two, these four elementary te techniques is uh, necessary. Uh, that is silicon-based light modulator, <coughs> light receiving element, uh, optical waveguide, and light emitter. <coughs> uh, four, three, uh, these three elements are already uh, realized in uh, sil silicon. Uh, but the silicon-based light emitter is not realized yet because, uh, the, because silicon has indirect band gap structure. <coughs> so it's, uh, it's hardly emit, emit, uh, emit light. <coughs> so uh, now, uh, the hybridization of uh, these three silicon-based <coughs> elements and the light emitter uh, made, made of uh, compound semiconductor <coughs> is performed. Uh, but uh, if light emitter, uh, the silicon-based light emitter is realized, <coughs> the compatibility with uh, pre, uh, present silicon uh, fabrication technology is much better. So uh, silicon-based light emitter have to be realized. <coughs> As uh, light emitting material, uh, Arbion is very interesting in silicon photonics. Uh, here, I. Uh, I introduced the properties of Arbion. <coughs> Arbion emits 1.5 micrometer light due to its inertial transition. This wavelength is, uh, is the lowest loss in silica, fi silica fiber. So, <coughs> uh, the, the, uh, so Arbion is already applied for the light amplification of optical fiber network. Uh, this is uh, Arbium doped fiber amplifier. <coughs> uh, this is the electron configuration of Arbium atom in the crystal. Uh, the Arbium, Arbium is, uh, if Arbium is introduced in the crystal, uh, they become uh, trivalent ion. <coughs> uh, the 4F electrons are occupied incompletely, while the outer 5S and 5P, 5P electrons uh, occupied uh, completely. <coughs> uh, from uh, f due to this 4F electrons inertial transition, the 1.5 meter light uh, light is emitted, and the, the the wavelengths of this transition uh, from this transition, <coughs> uh, the wavelength is independent of host material because uh, the 4F electrons are completely shielded by outer 5S and 5P electrons. <coughs> because of uh, this property uh, makes it possible to emit 1.5 micrometer light from silicon. So, <coughs> IBM doped silicon is uh, very attracting materials for silicon photonics. Uh, uh, research is to, uh, so far, research is to enhance the luminescence efficiency uh, by uh, such as by co-implantation of various impurities after Arbium implantation, or the fabrication of highly concentrated Arbium layer by molecular beam epitaxy. Uh, in this study, uh, <coughs> we focus on the microscopic structure of Arbium in silicon rather than the luminescence of uh, Arbium in silicon. Uh, this approach is uh, very important because the very little is known, known on the uh, microscopic structure of Arbium in silicon. <coughs> uh, one reason is that uh, Arbium, is, uh, Arbium in silicon uh, forms a variety of uh, optically active uh, luminescence centers. So the 
uh, multiple <coughs> luminescence centers makes the luminescence, uh, luminescence spectrum uh, inhomogeneous. Uh, to reduce the inhomogeneous broadening, uh, isotopically controlled silicon is very powerful too. Uh, basically, the uh, silicon has three stable isotopes uh, with this uh, natural abundance. <coughs> uh, this figure shows the natural silicon uh, with this uh, natural uh, with this natural abundance isotopes, and this is the, uh, this figure is shows the isotopically purified <coughs> silicon. <coughs> to compare this uh, these two material, uh, we can see that the, the environment of uh, the surroundings of Arabian mountain become more homogeneous. So it's expected to become more uh, homogeneous luminescence spectrum in 28 silicon. Uh, also, moreover, it's, uh, it is reported that host material, uh, host material influenced the luminescence of Arabian. Uh, this figure shows the Arabian doped amorphous silicon and Arabian doped crystalline silicon. As we can see, uh, the fine structures uh, can, uh, can be detected in crystalline silicon, uh, crystalline, uh, Arabian doped crystalline silicon. Uh, this result indicates that uh, if we put in the isotopically enriched <coughs> surroundings in Arabian ion, uh, we can obtain uh, finer, much, uh, much finer peaks uh, from this uh, from this uh, environment. So the purpose of this study is to investigate how the isotope, uh, the host isotopes, affect the inertial luminescence. <coughs> then uh, I show the mechanism of uh, Arabian ion uh, photoluminescence in silicon. <coughs> Uh, here I show the energy diagram of silicon and the energy levels of 4F electrons of uh, uh, 4F electrons of amium 3 plus. <coughs> uh, this uh, energy level is uh, induced by spin orbit splitting. Uh, to detect the photoluminescence, uh, <coughs> the carrier is generated by laser illumination, and the generated carrier forms a uh, Free exciton, uh, and the and the exciton is trapped by uh, rbm rated uh, donor state, and then the the bound exciton uh, uh, recombine here, and the recombination energy is transferred to the 4f electrons of rbm ion. Then the rbm uh, then the 4f electrons uh, transit to the excited state, and by the relaxation of this uh, state. The 1.5 mic micrometer light is emitted. This is the mechanism of RBM3 plus ion in uh, silicon. Uh, then I show the crystal field splitting. Uh, if the RBM is uh, incorporated in a crystal, uh, the state of four electrons uh, split more uh, fine structure. <coughs> Uh, this uh, this crystal field splitting is uh, depends on the site symmetry of rbm in silicon. Uh, this uh, these energy levels are typical uh, site symmetry of rbm in silicon. Uh, this uh, rbm c uh, represents the cubic cubic site symmetry of rbm, and the uh, these uh, O1 and O2. Uh, represents the oxygen related uh, low symmetry uh, low symmetry uh, site of rbm <coughs> the rbm c uh, c uh, state the crystal field splitting uh, the number of crystal field splitting is 5 and the lower symmetry uh, site of symmetry uh, lower symmetry site uh, splits into eight, <coughs> eight, eight levels. Uh, the luminescence, uh, the photoluminescence, uh, the peaks appears corresponding to the these uh, each, each transitions. 
<coughs> then I will show uh, the details of samples, uh, sample study. <coughs> uh, we prepared uh, we prepared two kinds of samples uh, with with an epitaxial layer of 6.6 .6 micrometers. <coughs> uh, one is uh, isotopically enriched 28 silicon epitaxial layer, and the other is uh, natural silicon epitaxial layer. Uh, we implanted uh, RBM and oxygen with with this energy, uh, 303. 5 kilo electron volts and 43 kilo electron volts. The energy of the implantation energy of oxygen is uh, determined to obtain the same concentration peak uh, of the erbium. <coughs> uh, this is uh, this this figure shows the relation between between the depth of the sample and the concentration of erbium and oxygen. <coughs> In this case, the Concentration of uh, the dose amount of RBM is 3.6 times 10 to the 12th uh, per square centimeter and 1.05 times 10 to the 13th per square centimeter. Uh, this concentration corresponds to the 5 times 10 to the 17th per cubic centimeter and 1 times uh, 10 to the 18th per cubic centimeter. Uh, this oxygen value is uh, corresponding to the CZ silicon. Ah, CZ silicon. <coughs> uh, the concentration uh, range of RPM is one to one times ten to the sixteen to five times seven ten to ten to the seventeen per cubic centimeter. Uh, some samples, all the samples are uh, implanted like this, uh, were annealed at nine hundred degrees Celsius for thirty minutes. Uh, and also, uh, I fabricated reference samples uh, without oxygen implantation. In this case, uh, samples were annealed at 600 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. And also, uh, I implanted uh, CZ silicon. <coughs> In this slide, uh, I will show the, our, our PF measurement setup. Uh, we are using a uh, BOMM DA8 Fourier transform interferometer. The sample was put in a bath type liquid film cryostat. Uh, the samples were excited by a uh, 488 nanometer argon laser line. The penetration depth of uh, this line into silicon is about one micrometer. And the uh, PL is uh, detected by liquid nitrogen cooled germanium detector. Uh, before I show the result of isotopically uh, purified uh, silicon photoluminescence, uh, I show the basic basic uh, basic PL properties of RBM doped silicon. Uh, this spectrum shows a uh, wide range uh, PL spectrum of RBM doped silicon. The horizontal axis is wave wave number and the uh, vertical axis is PL, uh, PL intensity. <coughs> the peaks around 8,800 centimeter in mass uh, is uh, boron TO bound excision lines uh, peaks, and the peaks at around 6,500 centimeter in mass uh, is uh, is derived from erbium. Uh, <coughs> compared to ah, and and this. This spectrum is uh, for CZ silicon taking out two Kelvin. Uh, compared to th these two spectrum, uh, the, the, the intensity of RBM is uh, uh, moderate compared to uh, boron, uh, boron peaks. Uh, but uh, but if we, if we increase the temperature, the, in, uh, the, the intensity of Arbium peaks uh, con consists up to 20 Kelvin, while the boron TO peaks are uh, vanish rapidly. <coughs> uh, and this is the narrow range of uh, PL spectrum of Arbium in silicon. <coughs> uh, mainly, uh, we can separate uh, two parts. 
Uh, one is the ground stage transition, and the other is uh, our second or third, third crystal field split uh, transitions. Uh, these uh, fine peaks uh, correspond to the, the, the different kinds of site symmetry transitions. <coughs> and in this slide, uh, I show the typical uh, site symmetry uh, photoluminescence and assign the peaks. Uh, the upper figure shows the, the period spectrum of CZ silicon annealed at 900 degrees Celsius. And this, uh, the lower part shows the natural silicon annealed at 600 100 degrees Celsius. The black arrows, uh, <coughs> black arrows indicate the, this cubic site symmetry. Uh, and, and the red, red arrows uh, shows the uh, O1 and O2 uh, oxygen related uh, site symmetry. Uh, oxygen rated <coughs> avion. Uh, uh, because these two levels are very close, uh, the peaks, uh, peaks uh, rated to oxygen is overlapping in this spectrum. <coughs> uh, so you can see uh, uh, the, the 900, uh, the sample annealed at higher temperature is dominated by uh, cubic site symmetry and the, the lower temperature annealing <coughs> uh, the, uh, the peaks are dominated by oxygen rated centers. Uh, this, this spectrum show, uh, shows that the cubic, site, cubic symmetry uh, centers are efficiently created at higher temperature uh, anew. <coughs> and then uh, I show the concentration dependence of uh, PL spectrum of RBM in silicon. Uh, this is the PL spectrum of CZ silicon uh, taking up 5 Kelvin. Uh, as we can see, the, the intensity of uh, the intensity of uh, PL spectrum uh, greatly enhance, enhances from 1 times 10 to the 16th to 5 times 10 to the 17th per cubic centimeter. <coughs> uh, this tendency is uh, matched with uh, previously reported uh, fact, uh, and it is also reported more than uh, more than 5, five times 10 to the 17th per cubic centimeter. Uh, the peer intensity starts to saturate, uh, and uh, also precipitation is start to uh, form. So, so I said the maximum con uh, concentration of RBM uh, five times ten to the seventeenth per cubic centimeter. <coughs> In uh, next, uh, I show the effect of oxygen co, co implantation. Uh, this is a PL spe spectrum for CZ silicon and uh, epitaxial uh, epi epi silicon with oxygen implantation and without oxygen implantation. Uh, all the all the spectrum, uh, all the samples are uh, implanted the same value of five times ten to the seventeen per cubic centimeter. Even at high concentration of rapium, uh, with if we we don't uh, in, implant the, uh, the oxygen, the, cons uh, the intensity of peak is very low. Uh, and thanks to the imp uh, oxygen implantation, uh, we can obtain the high, in high luminescence intensity and measure the high resolution photoluminescence uh, spectrum. <coughs> I, I have shown the basic PL properties of uh, photoluminescence of uh, RBM in silicon. Uh, and from the next slide, uh, I will show the, isotop, uh, the P spectrum of isotopically purified silicon. First of all, uh, I will explain the isotope effect on photoluminescence. 
as I, as I mentioned, uh, the isotopically purified silicon uh, makes the, the impurity surrounding uh, homogeneous. And various isotope effects on uh, isotope effects are, have been reported. <coughs> Here, I show the isotope effect on bound external photoluminescence. This is the PL spectrum uh, of both uh, 28 silicon and natural silicon of uh, uh, phosphorus and boron no phonon no peaks of natural silicon and 28 silicon. Uh, the peaks, uh, peaks are sifted uh, with the length of this arrow, uh, and, uh, <coughs> uh, and peaks in 28 silicon is uh, much narrower than uh, in natural silicon. So mainly, uh, these two, these two <coughs> phenomena is the, the isotope, or, uh, isotope effect on photoluminescence. And the peak shift is caused by band gap change of uh, silicon. And the peak width narrowing is, uh, the, is caused, to, caused by reduction of inhomogeneous broadening. Uh, for Erbium case, uh, the peak shift due to the change of the crystal field splitting and the peak width narrowing by the homogeneous, homogeneous surrounding are uh, expected. First, I show the uh, high resolution uh, fluminescence for the sample annealed at 600 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is a pure spectrum taken at 5 Kelvin with the resolution uh, 0.3 centimeter inverse. Uh, <coughs> the typical uh, peaks are marked with arrows. Uh, ED1 uh, is the Peak with a uh, peak with uh, related to uh, implantation damage. <coughs> uh, as we can see, the peaks, uh, all the peaks, uh, coincide with two spectra, so we couldn't see the peak shift of. Ah, uh, and this energy region is a uh, high high energy region of uh, corresponds to uh, main peaks, uh, and we. We couldn't measure the peak shift or uh, peak peak shift, and this is also the high resolution photoluminescence uh, the, for the sample are near at 900 degrees Celsius. <coughs> this spectrum is taken up to Kelvin, and the resolution is 0.2 centimeter in bus. Uh, uh, for for this spectrum, uh, all the peaks coincide with two spectra and we couldn't uh, measure the peak shift of this spectrum. <coughs> uh, then uh, uh, we checked the, the, the change of crystal field splitting in, in the wide range. Uh, we focus on the uh, urban cubic sym symmetry uh, centers. A center. <coughs> this is a period spectrum of uh, 28 second Arbian and natural second Arbian. <coughs> uh, the the C, C peaks are marked with red arrows. Uh, as you can see, the peaks, uh, all the peaks, uh, coincide with each other. And the uh, splitting of uh, this peak and this peak is almost the sa same value of this reported value. <coughs> then, uh, then uh, in this slide, uh, uh, we uh, we compare the line widths of uh, PL spectrum. <coughs> uh, this uh, this is the the spect uh, PL spectrum of uh, CZ silicon. Uh, the line width of uh, main peak, uh, this is uh, cubic cubic center, uh, is 0 0.17 centimeter inverse. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in natural uh, natural epitaxial silicon and 28 silicon is uh, silicon uh, 
the cubic peak is very low, so we couldn't measure the line width of <coughs> line width of these peaks. Uh, uh, instead of this peak, the strongest peak is the this O2 O2 peak O2 peak. Uh, but this uh, and this uh, line width of this uh, li the line width of this peak is 0 0.18 centimeter inverse. It's uh, comparable to this uh, this peak. And in 28 seconds, uh, the li the line width of O2 is uh, also not measure measurable. Uh, but uh, it's it's uh, at, but we can see that uh, it's broader than in natural silicon. So uh, as a result, uh, we can say that the peak width narrowing is not measured in 28 silicon. So uh, we uh, then uh, we discuss the the peak position and line width. <coughs> Uh, the peak position is not changed in uh, narrow range and wide range. <coughs> uh, this, uh, from this result, we can assume that the change of isotopic composition is too small for crystal field splitting. Uh, in 28 second, uh, in natural silicon, the percentage of 28 silicon is uh, 92 percent. So the Purification of uh, natural silicon to 28 silicon is just the change of 7% of uh, the composition. So to confirm, uh, to confirm that the, if the crystal field splitting is affected or not, uh, the, the comparison with uh, RBM doped 30 silicon is necessary. <coughs> also, uh, uh, then. Uh, I uh, we focus on the line widths. Uh, this this table shows the uh, the narrowest line, line widths uh, as far as I know. Uh, the the peak uh, the line widths of this work uh, is nearly the 0 0.18 cent. The narrowest peak is nearly the 0 0.18 per, cent, per centimeter in bus, uh, but the uh, the <coughs> RBM doped silicon by uh, fabricated by MBE or RBM doped gallium arsenic uh, shows a uh, much narrow, much narrow uh, line width. <coughs> uh, uh, this uh, this this result shows that uh, to to see the the real uh, to see really. Uh, uh, affect uh, the impurity, uh, the the isotope effect. Uh, we have to uh, we have to change the fabrication method because uh, if we implant the uh, ions into crystal, the, the damage the crystal uh, is damaged and usually uh, it's recrystallized by uh, thermal annealing, but Maybe in, in this case, the implantation damage is not negligible. <coughs> so finally, uh, let me summarize my presentation. Uh, we tried to measure isotope effect on photoluminescence of RBM in silicon, but it's not detectable. Uh, to confirm the invariance of peak position, uh, 30 silicon should be used. And to see the peak width narrowing, uh, improvement of Sample fabrication will be necessary. That's all. Thank you for your kind attention.